I'm John Williams. I'm at Derbyshire County Cricket Club today on the 26th of October 2017 and I'm interviewing... Clive Harris. Thank you, Clive. Clive, uh, amongst many things in his involvement in Derbyshire cricket, has been heavily involved in the administration and development of the amateur cricket uh, and the amateur cricket leagues in Derbyshire. Um, Clive, how did you first get involved in the administrative side of cricket? Yes, the, the league used to have regular meetings, AGMs and, and, and such like, and um, at the time I'd moved from Denby and was playing for Littleover, who, who had joined the league, and they wanted somebody to go to these meetings uh, as representing the league, just as we do now, by the way, yeah. uh, at AGMs and Royal Division meetings. And um, uh, I volunteered or whatever. And I actually found it quite interesting because you share with other clubs exactly the same problems that you experience. Hmm. But they've got the experience of having been there, done that, got the T-shirt. So I used to go to quite a few meetings and I don't like to think I've been outspoken, but I've always been very inquisitive. And if somebody said something that I don't quite understand, I haven't sort of sat there and said nothing. Mm. I've, I've put my hand up and asked why, sort of thing. Mm. Um, anyway, I got quite involved. And at the time, which was 1977, Tony Pope was the chairman, right? And uh, he came to me at the end of a meeting. And he said, uh, you come to these meetings regularly. I've probably been going for a couple of years. As, as the representative for Little Over. And I said, yeah, I quite enjoy it. It's a bit of a night out, you know, no problem. And he said, Would, have you thought about going on the committee? Well, I hadn't, but I thought, well, I'd seen how it operates, and I thought, well, why not, you know. Um, it looked, looked all right to me. So I, asked, I joined the committee. I got elected to the committee in 77. Now, rather surprisingly, <laughs> What they did in those days was they didn't actually elect a chairman, they elected a vice chairman. The chairman stood for two years and then the vice chairman automatically took over right. and they elected another vice chairman. Mm. And in about 79, only a couple of years in, I was asked would I stand for vice chairman, you see. And uh, I thought, well, why not? Over all the years, my wife has been most obliging, right? And I always asked her, because it, it, there is involvement and there is time, you know. And she was more than happy, you know. Uh, exactly, no problem. So I said, yes, go on then. Well, I got elected vice chairman, which meant that in two years, in 81, I think it is, I automatically became the chairman, okay? And I have to say, I loved it. Again, like playing, I loved the involvement mm. because you now had to sort of have one or two fingers in other pies. You had to learn about the, the, the economics and, and, and later on as the years progressed, you know, we, we, we divide ourselves into subcommittees. So there's a rules subcommittee, there's a ground subcommittee, you know, there's all these subcommittees that... The chairman just has to keep a handle on. You don't yeah. have to interfere yeah. because one of the things that I've been absolutely blessed with uh, over my period as chairman of both the County League and the Premier League when that started was a wonderful team of officials. Mm -hmm. I can only think of one official in 30 years. I was 15 chairman of each, actually, as it worked out. In 30 years, we only had one official who was not up to the job. And, and we had to get rid. Everybody else has been absolutely a pleasure to deal with. So I was chairman for two years, right? Ch can I just clarify which, which, which cricket league that was at that time? Right. Well, it was probably originally in 81, it was still the Notts Derby Water League. Right. I think it was about 82 that it changed its name. Right. Right? Yeah. But that's a bit of a guess. Don't hold me to that. No. But it was certainly while um, I'm sure I was in the chair at the time. Yeah. Because uh, I remember Tony Blount saying this. And as I say, I, I thought that's a bit highfalutin, but it, got, it took the vote. So, yeah. But then it changed 
quite early on in the 80s. Yeah. And my guess is 82. Yeah. Um, so, so I served me two years as chairman. Yeah. And then the vice chairman took over. Yeah. Right, and this is how it used to happen. Anyway, yeah. it got round to selecting now another vice chairman. Right. Okay. And I don't know who it was. It might have been Tony Pope said, I think we ought to change this rule. If we've got, and these are his words, and I, I hope it doesn't come across as pompous. He said, if we've got a decent chairman, he said, why don't we just keep voting a chairman? Right. Well, they agreed to do this, to my surprise. Right. So I had the job for the next 13 years. Right. <laughs> and, um, yeah. But again, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I yes. really did. I enjoyed every moment. Yes. Um, I used to go on holidays outside the cricket season and all that bit. I wouldn't, wouldn't miss a bit. And in between meetings, you know, monthly meetings. Yeah. We could only go away at a certain time. No, I loved it. So I did my stint as the county league chairman uh, up until 90. Seven, basically, although I, I was still chairman of the county league in 97 and 98. I'll explain that in a bit. And uh, gradually, of course, the league is expanding all the time. Uh, we managed to get our finances on a footing, mm -hmm. right? There was one meeting I went to. I was still Little Over's representative. And a treasurer called George Quinton uh, got up and said, gentlemen, he said, uh, we shouldn't exist. He said, we've got no money. He said, we've got bills to pay. Right. And uh, we shouldn't really be in business. And what they did, they had a whip round. And it was five pound. Could you pay your subs, like now, right. which was sort of November, December time, instead of start of the season. Right. And about, you know, uh, I don't know, 15 clubs took to fiver in, and the league kept going. Right. Uh, it was that close. Yeah. You know? Anyway, we managed to sort that out. Yeah. And... Uh, it's, it's on a sound financial footing, yeah. to, to say the least. So that was interesting because there was development all the time yeah. and uh, subcommittees. I mean, one of the big changes during that time was the improvement to grounds and facilities. Right. A little story there. Our AGM didn't take that long because there was probably about 40 clubs by now. So what we used to do to pan it out was to invite somebody to come along and have a chat to us and a bit of a question and answer session. Right. And uh, Bob Taylor came at the time, I remember. But also David Harrison came. Now, David Harrison was the then secretary of Derbyshire County Cricket Club. They didn't call him chief executives. He was secretary. Yeah. And what used to happen was that all the club and ground lads who weren't playing in the first team didn't play in the Border League or the County League, whichever changed its name. They all went up to Yorkshire, Undercliff, Bowling Old Lane, Uddersfield League, right? right? Yeah. And some very brave fella put his hand up at the question and answer time and said, Mr Harrison, can you tell us why you send all the Derbyshire lads up to Yorkshire to play their Saturday cricket when they're not playing in the first team? And he said, gentlemen, he says, you're not going to like the answer. He says, but basically... The grounds you play on, the pitches mainly, are not up to scratch, and the grounds you play on are also lacking in facilities. Yeah. The next meeting, a guy called Cyril Mullinger was secretary, the meeting was held at Sponden, I remember it well, and Cyril said, right gentlemen, first item on the agenda. We heard what David Harrison said, what are we going to do about it? Anything or nothing? And we decided, as a committee, to do something about it. Right. Hence, pitch marking came in. Grounds grading came in. We started off with A, gave them three years, top two or three divisions. Then we went to B, three years. Every club had three years to do it. Right. right? Went overnight. Yeah. Uh, grade C, as well as then, three years. So the whole operation took nine years. Right. Right. And then relegation came in if you hadn't got it. Right. And one or two clubs did get relegated, but it sent the message round. Yeah. And I think everybody now, certainly myself and people like Tony Pope and Arne Gaskin still around, who was, avail who was um, playing cricket in the 60s, the change in, in grounds now is just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, uh, One of the illustrations I always give is that you look at a handbook now, and in the 60s and 70s, 
and 80s to a lesser extent, there was pages and pages of bowling performances. The batting performances, and you got in the book if you scored 60, mm. was about half a page. Yeah. It's completely changed over. Yeah, yeah. One of my early games was against Riddings, and they declared at 155. Right. You don't declare now at 255. No, no. It made it a better game. No. So that was all interesting. That was all happening, uh, if you like, under, uh, under during my, my what is it were. Although, don't to get me wrong, it wasn't my, you know, it was spread out yeah, amongst was, 20 people. But, under the time you were the chair, though. That's it? right, yes. Yeah, I was just, yeah. if you like, pulling the strings. Did you have to, uh, you know, they changed the system and from re-electing somebody every yes. couple of years yes. and changed the system so that you became chairman and stayed yes. chairman for a number of years. Yes. Did you still have to be re-elected or did they just... Yes, but by the committee. Right. Right. What happened was the, the officers got elected by the committee right. and it was the committee right. that got elected by the clubs got you so yeah. they could put people on the committee if they didn't yeah. like you they could get rid yes. of you yes. you know you was you were yes. that inclined so, and yeah. you said you, you did the derbyshire league for 40, 15, 15 years, years. 15 yes, years yes as it worked out yeah and then you moved on to the premier league the premier league right yeah. what happened was in 97 yeah ecb came along yeah. with the big idea of Premier Leagues. Yeah. Right? Now, originally, Derbyshire weren't supposed to get one because um, ECB, very much southeast. I still believe that. I'm sorry about that, but I still think it's outside the M25. They don't know about the rest of the country. I could, I could take another hour telling you stories because as chairman of the Premier League, we had a meeting every year down at Lords with all the Premier Leagues. Yeah. And the conversations were just unbelievable. The southeast and the rest of the country is two different worlds. Yeah. Unfortunately, on our side, we had the Yorkshire League, we had the Birmingham League, we had the West of England League, um, big powerful leagues, the Northern League, who, who lived in the North yes. and, and the South East. Yes. Uh, and you had the Derbyshire League as well. And the Derbyshire, uh, very much so, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Anyway, we proved to the powers that be who wanted an East Midlands League, oh, right. right? They could have one in Middlesex and Surrey, and Essex and Sussex, right. but Derbyshire, oh no, 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 not, no, 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 no. So we had a meeting at Trent Bridge amongst the five counties, right? And we decided to attack this Frank Kemp uh, because we went down in 98 as observers, right, right. to start with. Yeah. And we had a meeting with him and we said, look, this is ridiculous. The East Midlands area that you're talking about is larger than Belgium for a right. start. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. Right. Now, to get from Clifton, near Ashbourne, to Cleethorpes, on a summer Saturday, yeah. right, no motorways, you'd have to leave on the Thursday, and you won't get back till the Tuesday. Yeah. He had no idea no. of how the, the rest of the country operates. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, we convinced them that we could have our own Premier League, right. but it was hard work. Right. Okay. And what happened was, we started in 97, Right. We had to have a pyramid structure, right. which involved the Yorkshire and Derbyshire, the Derbyshire and Cheshire, and the Burton League was going in those days, and we formulated this pyramid, right? right? Yeah. And it still operates now. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, the team who won the Yorkshire and Derbyshire League last year yeah. are seriously interest, interested in coming in. Right. But they have to wait a year. Okay. Because what we've said to them, if you want to come in, somebody's got to drop out, an extra relegation. Right. Now, we always tell our clubs a full 12 months before there's going to be any extra relegation. Right. We don't just drop it on them in the August. Sure. Oh, three of these are going down. Yeah. So this side wouldn't be able, they could come in, but not till yeah. 2019. Yeah. Okay. So the Premier League started. Now, I was involved with the cricket board at the time who actually organised it, but the County League couldn't because they would be poaching clubs. And it worked really well in Derbyshire because John Salisbury did a terrific job. It took us three meetings, three hours each meeting, to decide which 12 clubs would make up the Premier League. Yeah. And after great debate with administration, junior section, grounds, facilities, where you're currently standards at the moment, where you're playing, etc., we actually finished up with the top division 
of the previous year in the county league less the two that had got relegated right, right? plus Chesterfield and Sandiacre right who had come in yeah. Derbyshire based clubs yeah and it made for a really strong league you yeah. know and then that all filtered down yeah. uh, division one of the county league became the feeder league yeah. okay for my own personal involvement yeah. obviously they had to form a committee yeah. okay there was an initial grant from ECB about seven thousand pound Derbyshire put five thousand in to their credit We've not had nothing since, but they put it into it first, which helped to... Yeah. And, of course, they wanted a chairman. Yeah. Anyway, I was approached, uh, would I take on the job? And yeah. I said, well, yes. And I thought the Premier League was the future, by yeah. the way. I, yeah. I believe strongly in them. Yeah. And I think, in the main, it's worked, yes. right? It has improved standards, right? Um, not wholly, 100%, but it has worked. And I said I would have to give up the chairmanship of the county league right. because that would be a conflict of, of interest. Yeah. So anyway, I was elected chairman of the Premier League yeah. and, and gave up the county league. They very kindly made me a life member of right. the county league, which yeah. meant I could still go to the meetings. Right. Okay, so that was helpful. Yeah. And then I did 15 years uh, of the Premier League chairman yeah. and then I got to 75. Right. And I, I always thought, you know, it's time, to, when to go is when people say, why are you going, yeah. not why aren't you going, you know. <laughs> and I thought, 75, yeah. that, that, that's enough. Yeah. And uh, I, I gave them a year's notice. Right. Uh, they got a good replacement in Dave Fern. Yeah. Okay. And again, they very kindly made me a life member of the sure. family. Yeah. So I'm still sort of involved yeah. uh, with that. But, but again, that's basically disappeared now. There is a subcommittee that runs the Premier League, right? But they are now part of the County League. Yeah. They come under the umbrella of the County League as the Premier Division right. as against the, the Premier League. Yeah. And that's made sense. That's made sense. And do you have any... Are, are you on any other committees or anything now? Are you sort of properly retired? It doesn't sound like you're properly retired from it, does it? You're still well, involved, uh, aren't you? I did the cricket board for six years, yeah. right? And then... We'd set the pyramid up, the Premier League was up and running. As I say, I was supposed to be responsible for clubs and leagues, so that was all fitting in nicely. And again, um, I thought, time to move on, right. you know, after six years. Yeah. Um, my other interests, uh, there are a few. Sure. <laughs> um, I was involved at Weston on Trent with the, with the Village Hall Committee. Right. Um, I started on that, and blow me, they made me chairman of that. Right. So I did that for 10 years. and. Uh, 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 but again, uh, footpaths and things got a little bit boring. Right. But we was having a big development done, extension, and there was an involvement of selling land, and that was very interesting. Yeah. Um, but again, I decided to retire. I think you get to an age where there are younger people coming through, yeah. and, and you want them to encourage them. Yeah. You know, lots of committees are made up of middle aged to elderly people. Sure. You know, you don't get many youngsters coming on yeah. so I think you need to create gaps yeah. but even under the system now I'm still involved with the ground subcommittee yeah. I'm still on the disciplinary subcommittee right. as, as deputy chairman to yeah. that well nearly deputy chairman they, they always call me up when chairman can't make it and um, uh, I find that interesting yeah. you know, developing the grounds and going to see clubs that want to come in and clubs that want to move from grade A to grade A plus, right. going to their ground, telling them what they want, etc. Okay. All over all those years, there's been tremendous development over those years. Indeed. And that's what's been interesting to me. Yeah. They've got a policy of the county league. They're always looking six months to nine months ahead. We're planning now, and have been for a good nine months, the 100th season. Fantastic. We've already got a game against MCC. Yeah. And we're looking forward to 2019, Smashing. 100 years. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.